Welcome home with Barbara Beck, a Good Life 45 original production. Get ready to watch hope happen. Hey everyone, I'm Barbara Beck and I'd like to thank you for tuning in to Welcome Home. On today's program, we're going to be talking about a subject that is near and dear to my own heart, and that's raising godly kids, particularly teenagers, and how we can help them get through those challenging teenage years, all the while staying close to them. We'll also be discussing strategies for dealing with teens who are in trouble. How do we give them love, respect, and space they so desperately crave, while at the same time balancing freedom with boundaries. Well, later on in the program, we have a couple of experts on this very subject. We'll be talking to a principal and a teacher from Journeys Academy, along with a former student who attended Journeys. This school is an alternative school for troubled teens. In fact, teens who have not been successful in public school for whatever reason and have one more chance to make it work in this type of setting where their teachers and administrators are committed to helping them overcome some of their challenges. But before we get to our guests, let's see what the current ladies have to say about raising teenagers and what some of their experiences and observations have been. Welcome, ladies. Hi. 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 Great Hi. to have Hi. everybody here today, particularly my little biker chick yeah. daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You're looking good. Both of you together. A little yeah. bit of biker attitude here with me today, too. We did not call each other and talk. It's just I saw Kristen walk in. I went, oh, you know, you did not. <laughs> and yes, she did. Yes, I did. And then Deborah and Leanne, and they're black. I know people, this is silly, but people ask all the time, do you all coordinate your outfits? Do you well, talk about it? Not. <laughs> obviously not. right? I'm the rebellious one. No, we like you because you brought a little sunshine yeah. into all this darkness, darkness, right? Sun sunshine. A little sparkle. So what about raising godly teenagers? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's really wild because I think we're all raising kids, and we're all in the midst of this battle. So I, I still am. You're right about that. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know, and here's the battle. But anyways, uh, here's the battle. <laughs> <battle. laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it, but you know, I always say this. I, I never want to speak out like, oh, our kids are so perfect because we're in the middle of the growth and you never know what life's going to throw. Mm -hmm. But we do work every week. I get to work with about 150 to 175 youth every mm -hmm. week. And we had prayer meeting this Tuesday night and just going around the room and just asking the kids, what do you want to pray for? And just seeing the tears pour out of them and they just kept saying, I feel so alone. Mm. I feel so unloved. And I mean, I left there going, wow, what are we doing as parents? What are we doing as a community of the church that these kids mm -hmm. are feeling so alone and unloved? And I mean, you realize very quick that the enemy is mm -hmm. just out to kill, steal, and destroy. Yeah. He's planting the seeds. But then we're watering it just with what we're listening to. I mean, what they get at school. I mean, the attack of kids at school. It's incredible, the bullies and mm -hmm. being told they're not good enough and they're not smart enough. And they're, the pressures are incredible. And these and are church kids. You're talking about, These right? are kids these, who come to church. Yeah. Now, face it, some of these kids, a lot of them come to our youth group, but they go home every night to homes that are not Christian mm -hmm. homes. I mean, we have one little girl that comes every week that her parents literally have told her, you know, you need to get your fake eyelashes on. You need to get wearing mm -hmm. different clothes. I mean, this is a father mm -hmm. speaking to his daughter. Mm -hmm. And you just realize very quickly that the world is sending out some messages that inside, I think every child, especially every daughter, is they want to be told they're beautiful. They want to feel protected. They want to feel covered. But that's not what a lot of these kids are going home to, mm -hmm. you know, and parents are busy. So mm -hmm. what puts our kids, teenagers, church kids or unchurched kids, what do you think some of the factors are that put them at risk? Because those are some at risk things that you're talking about. Well, I don't know exactly um, what puts them at risk. I mean, I think that isolation can put them at risk. I think social media can sometimes yes. be, be a big problem right. because of comparison. Mm -hmm. um, 
I, I think there's a number of a number of things, but I did come prepared with some some tools to help parents. Okay, let's hear some with troubled teens, okay. with teens who are at risk, trying to trying to deal with with our kids that have problems. And you know that my children are younger. I, mm -hmm. Charlie is 12, and and the other two are younger than that. So we're not quite in the teenagers, but we certainly have ventured into the tween years. Mm -hmm. um, and it, you know, there's there are our own the own our own dynamics there, but. Some of the things that just um, that I read about said, number one, no parent should ever feel like they're handling a struggle, struggling teen alone. That community is so important mm -hmm. as we face problems with, with our children. And number two, I think this one is so important, is to not give up on our teens. Mm -hmm. To not just throw our That's hands so up and say, mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't deal with you. Um, years ago, and I think I've shared this on the show, years ago I read something that Ann Boskamp said and it has stuck with me, but she said the child or the teen that repels you the most, the one that you can't even stand to be around, that's the one that you need to pour into the most. Mm -hmm. That's the one that you need to draw nearest to, mm -hmm. and it's so counterintuitive, and I know just from our own experiences at home, the one that is driving me nuts, he's the one that, that probably needs to feel the most mm. love yeah. from us because stuff's going on. Yeah, is that it? One, two. No, I mean there's two? like ten. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't want to okay. monopolize. I, we can come back to a couple. We of do. Them. We need to come back to them because I think it's real important. We talk about at the top of the show about giving people strategies, and but before we really talked about the strategies, I wanted us to really tune in and 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 hone in on some of the things that that are out there that are putting our kids at risk, the abuse, the neglect. Well, you know, Barbara, one of the things that I think we don't think about a lot, and you know, we will say. Um, kids that are in single parented homes are at risk. And one of the reasons why those children are probably most at risk is because as a single parent, you're working and yes. no one is supervising your mm -hmm. children. Right. Mm -hmm. And so just giving children that aren't ready for all of this freedom and space mm -hmm. puts them at risk. Mm -hmm. Right. When they're not ready to you know, not mature enough to be able to make certain decisions, mm -hmm. they shouldn't be put in the position to have to do it. And then of course you have predators mm -hmm. that are just out looking for opportunities. Um, and when I say predators, it's not all sexual predators because there's a lot of different, you know, things out there that people will introduce your kids to that you don't necessarily want them introduced to. Okay. And so yes, when we talk about social media, um, but even sometimes even in school, if you're a parent and you're not in tune to what's happening in your child's school and who their teachers are and, and, and just letting them know that, you know what, I'm here and I'm a parent, I'm involved, I'm concerned, your child now becomes off limits for certain things mm -hmm. when you're present. So yeah. just being present as a parent is extremely important mm -hmm. for your child at every age. Yeah. I, I, you are so right on. Um, Chase, my 15-year-old, um, I have two teenagers. One's 19 and she's in college and I feel like we made it through those teen years mm -hmm. with her pretty unscathed. And Chase, he's gone from private school to public school. And it's interesting, one of his teachers um, in the beginning of the year was saying some things that I was just like shocked. I'm like, can they even say that? And obviously freedom of speech, you can. And so that is exactly what I did. I emailed her and just said, hey, I'm just, um, was concerned, you know, I didn't really about what she said, but just in general to know, let her know, I'm watching. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> because I, d I mean, that is true. You just, mm -hmm. we, they're not with us during most of the day. You know, mm -hmm. I dropped him at school at seven and I won't see him because of um, practice, soccer practice, you know, until six tonight. Yeah. I mean, so he's with me for what, a few hours before right. he goes to bed? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so really watching mm -hmm. who they're around, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, when people know, part of our responsibility as parents is to protect our kids. And when people know that you are present, mm -hmm. they're less apt to do certain things mm -hmm. to your children or around your children. Wow. And then making sure that we maintain good communication. Um, you start, you were saying the child that you probably don't want to show love to is the one that needs it. When our kids were, my youngest is 17. <laughs> Jonathan's a senior in high school. He's going to graduate soon. That's so I'm, I'm really into that next yeah. area, area mm -hmm. of my life, I guess, or <laughs> whatever. But yeah, and I'm still having a little, no. yeah, OK. Mm -hmm. You know how I'm feeling, right? Yeah, you know absolutely. how I'm feeling. Yeah, yeah. my baby's a senior yeah, in high school. Um, but when, when the kids were little, and not, I can't even say when they're little, because I still do it. 
um, we're up early in the morning. I'm up early in the morning. And normally by the time they come downstairs, I have something ready for breakfast. But we start our day, they come down, they know that they have to give me a hug. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hug them, I'm gonna kiss them on their cheek, mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell them I love you. On their way out the door, you're gonna have a great day. If you need anything, call me. I love you, be careful. Just creating that environment mm -hmm. where they know that somebody is there for them and to support them. And we never leave the house. We never leave the house without a hug and have a good day, you know, and that kind of thing. But you were a single parent for a long time before I you was. had this. So, yeah. and you have five children. Four yes. of them are not teenagers anymore, right? Right. Okay, so did you have, <laughs> with those four teenagers, having been half time a single mom, half time a wonderful married mother that you are, did you have problems with any of your kids, with your teenagers? Not, not like, no. Okay. But I've all I grew up in a home where my family, my parents were present. Okay. And, well, let me just say, my great grandparents, mm -hmm. and even though they worked, they were present in my yes. life, mm -hmm. and I was raised in a certain kind of environment. I was raised in a loving environment. I learned how to be a mother, even though I was a teen mom. I learned that at home, mm -hmm. and a lot of our kids don't have that That's for yeah, whatever they reason. Right. They don't have that, and so the next best thing ends up being a church youth group, a sports team, yeah. or their peers. And, and if their peers aren't getting that love and attention at home, then what are they sharing with each other? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when they come to a youth yeah. group, is the youth group really equipped to be able to show that love and share that love? And my daughter, my daughter has, I tell her, she has too much self-esteem. <laughs> you know, Brandy, I said, girl, you think more highly of yourself than you ought. And she will tell me that it's my fault. Mm -hmm. Because from a little girl, I would tell her how beautiful she was and how smart she was. Mm -hmm. And whatever it was that she wanted to do, I encouraged her in that. Mm -hmm. and, and I was a single parent right. with her. That's awesome. And so it those is. are just, yeah, those are just... For me, those are normal, natural things. And so any parent that has a teen where they feel like that child is pushing away from them, mm -hmm. the easiest thing you can do is just give them a hug. Yeah. See, what Sometimes I'm hearing is that shut your mouth and just put your arms mm -hmm. around Your them. home was an at-risk home. It just was. Well, but based you on made statistics. It, based on statistics, but you made it a not at-risk home right. because of all the unconditional love that you gave right. to your kids. Well, well, and, and remember, it. too, sorry, Caroline, no, but she talked about her great-grandparents and her yeah. grandparents. They they did that for her. And yeah. so right. so this is a great example. Like you, There's no excuses for people. If you weren't loved well, then you've got to go figure out out, right? How you, um, first, obviously, the love comes from the Lord, but then you need to help pattern your life after somebody that is is doing that loving mm -hmm. environment. Because you can break the cycle. Right, right. Um, but you, you didn't have to. But you said something that really hit me hard. It, it, and I think it's so, you've got to get involved. Yeah. You have got to get involved with your children. We, I, I say this all the time, we have a thing in our home that about every two or three months, we sit down, my husband and I, and we go through and we take each one of our children and we go, how are they doing physically? Mm -hmm. How are they doing emotionally? How are they doing spiritually? We do a check on each one of eventually, uh, individually and go, okay, are they, are they exercising enough? Are they, are we eating healthy mm -hmm. enough? Are we in the word enough? Are they emotionally, is there things from outside? Are there things that we're seeing inside their hearts that they're pulling away? Mm -hmm. When you see your child pulling away, knock, knock. <laughs> you got to go get involved. When you see that door shutting, my kid's heading upstairs a lot. I don't mean this wrong. In our home, you're coming out. Mm -hmm. you, you're not, I mean, people who have computers and stuff in their room and TVs, we don't do that. I mean, you, I know our kids do homework and stuff, but we give them a certain amount of time, then you've got to come Carolyn, out of that Carolyn, I have all room. of that. I have all of that. My kids have laptops, they have iPhones, they have mm -hmm. everything. And they are in their rooms with it, they have TVs. But you know what, every once in a while, and I don't do it as much now because I have boys and they're older, <laughs> but every once in a while, you know what I would do? They didn't come out. I would go in their room. But that's and what I, I'm listen, saying. I would go in their room. I would climb in the bed with them, and I would just lay there and talk. Good. Because listen, but at it's some the point, involvement. Get it's involved. Being that's present. what yeah, I'm saying. Is you can't like I've got friends right now, 
who they literally, their kids go in their room, they shut their door, and they don't see their children. And I, I literally went and told them the other day, I said, honey, somebody needs to be mom and daddy and do what you said. Either go get in that bed, go get in their lives. Mm -hmm. They feel alone. They don't feel you care. When kids start to pull away, that's a warning sign, in my opinion. I understand mm -hmm. they need some when they mm -hmm. get teenagers, you know what I'm saying. They need a little bit of alone time. But you got to go get involved. It's yeah. what she said. It is part of our job as parents. I work with these kids every week. The other thing I want to bring up is the fussing and fighting in our homes. It's killing mm -hmm. these kids. I can't tell you how many children come and they're weeping going, I can't get my earphones on big enough to get the the noise of so them who's screaming. Fighting, the parents the or parents, the siblings? The parents are just okay. at each other. Whether they <laughs> are divorced or not divorced, they are still screaming at each other. They're, they're mm -hmm. pulling their kids in, their kids. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. this is killing our children. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like we as Christians, I, I don't even expect it of the world. They, they are on a dip, but us as Christians have got to rise up, get in the word and begin to kill our flesh. She said, pick up your cross and follow me. And mm -hmm. we've got to get self-controlled. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hate to talk this straight, but, but I will, it's killing Let, let me say something just a little bit counter counterintuitive to that. So we have some friends um, going through um, really hard divorce, Christian families, a few of them. And it has torn me up lately. And I'll tell you though, part of the problem has been sweeping it under the rug, pretending like everything yeah. was fine. So my husband and I do fight, and my children hear us fight, <laughs> and it's not always pretty, but <laughs> they actually know that we worked through an issue, and now we've resolved it, and we've moved on. So I'm That's just saying, different. I know it is, but, but you're talking to Christians, and so I'll just say, if you are one of those families who pretends everything's fine and just sweep it under the rug, be very, very careful, yeah. mm -hmm. because what happens is those dust mites they build under that rug and then they come out and they're and they're too big uh, to be dealt with so that sorry that's just some but personal I think that you can pain talk that I'm about going this, through my husband and I do that too because I lived in a home that my parents never fought in front of us and I say all the time I don't think that's healthy yeah I think kids need to see you disagree but I think they're need to see how we do it yeah no and absolutely for you and I I think it's one thing because you're probably not but I'm telling you when you hear what some of these kids how they're going at each other. I mean, the the cuss words and the threats. In Christian and the, homes? In Christian homes. Wow. I'm telling you, it's, it's killing these children. Listen, I'm not judging anybody. That's not the spirit of this. But it is a knock to go take a look at ourselves. This yeah. is... You know, you got to somewhere in your life go, wait, is it even healthy for me? Oh, is it absolutely. healthy for us? But is it killing my children? Is well, it? And, and plenty of times, you know, we have to all be honest and look in the mirror and apologize. Like, mm -hmm. um, it's always a big funny thing like in our house when Vince and I do have a fight like you know sometimes it is my issue or my fault and I have to apologize and I have to apologize to my children too it's really important that we as adults you know actually our children see us mm -hmm. admit like when we oh, we are not right mm -hmm. and yeah. um, and humble yourself my daughter's word uh, th for this calendar year is humble and I was like <laughs> humble like where did that come from she's like yeah and you could use some of that too <laughs> I was like oh, okay but that's your word <laughs> so, uh, anyway, just that whole idea of we all do need to look in that mirror and mm -hmm. see what the Lord's telling us individually. Barbara, well, I think, too, a lot of kids are under a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to say this. I don't care who you are. Your kids ain't perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. And so, a lot of times, we make it seem like, as Christians... Our kids are dotting every I and crossing every T. Okay, so maybe my kids weren't in juvenile detention, <laughs> but does that mean they made every right decision that they never did anything wrong? No, right. because we're not perfect. No one is perfect. And for me, one of the things that I, you know, or we try to do is remove the pressure from our kids. Now, being a pastor's kid, <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. I had to tell our congregation, the same temptations your kids 
are subject to, so are mine. <laughs> the same, your, your, your 12-year-old, my 12-year-old yeah, is no right. different. And they didn't choose that's to have right. their parents And they as did a not choose right. their parents, you know. right. And so sometimes just giving your children the space that they need to be able to mess up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if they, if they never make a mistake, they're gonna make a mistake. They're gonna make a bad decision. And if they, if they don't make it, and you have the opportunity to help them to correct it and to grow from it, they're probably gonna make a decision later in life that's gonna land them in prison. And so that's the other thing, is removing the pressure. A lot of kids are under pressure to be a certain way. Why? Because well, I if I mess up, I'm gonna be judged and I'm gonna, so even when they do make a mistake, what do they do? They hide it. Well, and I think a lot of parents, we, we all have the tendency to get some of our self-worth from the accomplishments of our kids. Oh, oh and so true. Right? And so some of that pressure is mm -hmm. felt because we want our kid to be the best kid on the sports yeah. team. We want my, our kid to be... I tell my be... kids, you are not responsible for my reputation. Exactly. <laughs> That's so good. 100%. <laughs> All parents. My kids are yeah. not responsible yeah. for my reputation. Mm -hmm. And things that they do, my reputation doesn't take a hit as a result. Yes. Mm -hmm. They're kids and they're growing. Yes. That's good. Say that again. I think yeah. that was so good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> They're not responsible for your reputation. That's good. They're yep. kids and they're they need kids. the room to grow. Yep. Mm -hmm. so. And we can do the best we can do, but right. they're gonna make their own decisions and they need to know that they're well loved and that they belong in the family and that they have place, a place and that they have our time. Right. Mm -hmm. The yeah. more time we can give them. But I do come back, because I know we're doing this on troubled teens. I think there is people out there who are going through that they see their kids heading in depression or heading mm -hmm. into drugs and heading into those things. And I want to bring up that focus on the family, I think, has an area that you can go on to fill out like a questionnaire thing that it'll tell you, you fill it out that if you really need to go find some counseling. Right, right. I mean, because there is people out there who their kids are really struggling with addictions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. struggling with alcoholism. Mm -hmm. They're, I mean, there's some pornography. I mm -hmm. mean, we have kids that are not only boys, but are girls mm -hmm. that are watching pornography. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is some real issues out mm -hmm. there that people are struggling with going, what do I do? And they're feeling like what you said, as failures, right. as parents, they need to know that they're not alone. Yeah. Right. Right. We have a scripture to end us. Yeah, it's kind of related to more for the parents, but it, Matthew 5, 15 says, Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand. It gives light in all the house. So that's for you, parents. That's good. That's a good encouragement for us today. Thank you, ladies. You all are doing a great job. By the way, these are pretty functional families. We were, as you were talking about, Carolyn, we were also trying to address dysfunction. And those of you who are hopefully not experiencing that, but if there are certain risk factors for your teenagers, um, if you are uh, maybe doubting that some of the friends that your children have or the that the could be neglect or abuse at school or at home. There are so many articles like Carolyn said and so much on the internet that you can go to and look. Find out if there are indicators that are putting your children at risk. What does at risk mean? It means that a child probably in a teenage year does not have a good likelihood of being a successful adult. If there are some of those factors, do something about it. If you're in a functional home and everything's going great, mm -hmm. just continue to love, love, love and pray for those children. They will be okay. Uh, thanks so much for joining us for this part of our program. We have more coming up, so stay with us. Coming up next. We have to absolutely focus on restorative practices and how to solve problems rather than just punishment. The consequences of being here and the consequences of coping in a negative way once they're with us um, can't be a punishment. That hasn't worked for them. They've got to work mm -hmm. through things and learn. Mm -hmm. You're watching Barbara Beck on Welcome Home, where we share life-changing stories filled with hope.
You're watching Welcome Home, bringing you life-changing stories filled with hope. So glad that you're here with us today, viewers. You are in for a treat. We're going to be talking to some people from Journeys Academy right here in Central Florida, and they're here to help you understand what it's like to be in an alternative kind of a setting. This school is for students who are having problems in public school, who needed to go to this school to maybe get their lives straightened out. We have the principal of that school here with us today. We have a teacher, and later on in the program, we're going to be having one of the students who went to that school. So you're going to get all kinds of different perspectives. We are so honored to have Principal Kevin Bev Kenny Bevan. Thank you so much, Kenny, for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you. And Absolutely. you brought a distinguished teacher as well. Thank you, Richard Lias, for being here with us. It's my pleasure. Well, you guys are superstars in my book because, as you know, I told you ahead of time, I've told our viewers before, I taught in the um, public and private sector for 13 years. So I know how tough it is tough job, but it's even tougher because of what Journeys is and who they serve. Tell us a little bit about that, Kenny. Well, we have more opportunities. You do? Uh, yeah, we absolutely have more opportunities than a regular school because students are coming to us with all different sorts of issues and circumstances and situations that haven't been comfortable in a lot of different uh, uh, arenas where they come from. And so it's, it's, uh, it's an honor and a blessing to work with the students who are most in need in our district. Right, right. Well, what would make somebody like you, who you were a teacher, you were a dean of students, you worked in, in public school. I guess Journeys is public, right? It is. It is a public school. So what would make you go from an already difficult situation to one that is, to me, almost an impossibility? Why <laughs> did you do this? Well, it's, it's where I felt my calling was. It's where I felt that uh, students who um, were uh, begging for help, yeah. or they were... Um, sending out a loud call um, needed somebody the most and I feel as though my strengths from the good Lord um, were um, a match for this position. Were you a troubled teen at all? <laughs> <laughs> Who wasn't, right? <laughs> that laugh. Next question. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it's, you have, it's, sorry, it's, it's funny because uh, when when I called him, you know, I, I was at Haggerty High School for five years, and Haggerty is a long way from an alternative school. Absolutely. Uh, and I called uh, Mr. Bevan. I actually emailed him, and he called me back in five minutes. And he says, and I thought of somebody pranking me because I told somebody I was going to do it. And I said, are you serious? He says, no, I, I saw you were from Haggerty. Are you interested in coming here? He says, why would you want to be coming here? Right. And I said, it's calling. Mm -hmm. It's something that I need to do because I felt like there were way more students at Haggerty who had things and, and had silver spoons mm -hmm. and, and were, were coasting. Right. And then I, you know, I started to have this, this, this faith crisis mental where am I doing enough? And I thought I needed to do a little bit more yeah. for folks who needed it. And so when he said that, that struck a chord with me because I think they immediately said, oh yeah, if he's, if he's serious. <laughs> we want him. We want him, we and want I him. thought that was, that was God's sign. Well, your presence commands a little bit of respect, <laughs> just walking in the door, you're how tall? I'm, I'm six foot. Yeah, you're a big and guy. I, I played football in college. Yeah, and, uh, you get a little my, respect from the kids? Yeah, they, my voice is, it it's travels. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes I use that. Mm -hmm. um, most of it is telling them that you're there to help and that this is an alternative situation. He's not kidding. There's way more opportunities for them to graduate and to do things, and he's willing to be flexible and give us the chance to do projects that we might not be able to have done at other schools. Like what? What are you talking about? Well, r r this year we started the Eagle Studio, and um, he, of course he green-lighted it. Eagle Studio is an incentive program for kids who actually finish their academic work to go and make music, make videos. Okay. We've made one, and uh, it's called It's All Right to Not Be All Right. And it's an anti-bullying video. Kids help produce it, help write it. We have a kid here today who we'll talk to who actually was part of the process. And those are the things that make us really happy to be there because we know we can do a little extra to get folks incentivized to do the work, the school work is most important to me because I think that gives them a chance to have a better life. Yeah, it's a great project. They, they put it together and it's a professional looking um, a product. Uh, you know, the message is it's okay to not be okay. A lot of times students, when they're bullied, they feel alone. Mm -hmm. They feel as though they're the only one 
and they're the victim and everybody else is, is against them. It's okay not to be okay. Other people are in the same situation. Now what are we going to do about it? And that's the message of the song. Is, really that, is that one of the biggest problems that you have there at Journeys would be bullying? Uh, yeah, it's, I think that's a problem pretty much everywhere. Yeah. Um, but, you what know, do you do about it as principal? Well, it's, um, it's a matter of connection with students. Um, I encourage uh, the students to connect with each other in positive ways. We focus on a positive uh, atmosphere. We, we weed out the negative by focusing on what's positive in life in our school and what we can do about the challenges that we have. And that's just it, they're challenges, not barriers. Mm. So it really starts when the students walk onto campus, they feel the mutual respect from the adults. And that's the philosophy and the foundation of what helps us become successful is the mutual respect with and from the adults um, sets the stage for the expectations on how to get along with each other as yeah. well. Do you feel like your whole faculty, like you, Rick, were called to that? Because if I were to go back into teaching again, I would probably not choose to go into a school that had, had students that were having problems. I find that most of our staff, if not all, are, were called to yes, that place. I would think so. And, and it, you know, the, the freedom to, to kind of give kids extra, stop the curriculum, He'll tell you all the time, hey, look, you got leeway. You know, when you need to give a, uh, a message of opportunity, when there's a fight or there's some kind of a, a need to discuss how to cope, how to breathe, relax, don't react, which is our next video we're doing, you know, that's time for us to have that discussion. And we do a lot of that and a lot of uh, coping strategies. Good. Just to make sure the kids are clear about that. Where are these kids coming from? They're troubled children, teenagers. They've had trouble in public school. They are, there's no place else for them to go but to go to Journeys. What have they done to get into Journeys? Well, a lot of different, like a lot what? of different situations. Okay, some examples. Um, we will have a student who has accumulated 16, 17 discipline referrals for classroom disruption. Okay. At that point, it's time for him to try something different. Okay. Or uh, we would have a student who uh, got busted selling pills in the bathroom. Um, that student needs a different setting as well. Mm -hmm. So it could be accumulation of an accumulation of several issues, or it could be one big thing. Are that, there mostly boys in. there or girls? Not to be biased here, but it's, <laughs> a, mi it's a mix. It's a, Is it it's about 50-50? It's about 60-40 on, on boys. So yeah, it's a pretty steady mix. A little heavier on the boys. Yeah. So once a student is at Journeys, do you feel like you're tougher on that student than that? No. It's not a. T it's not a. That's a good question. It's not a matter of being tough. It's a matter of um, uh, showing compassion and empathy. Really. And a lot of students that come to us, um, you know, whether they've been they've been uh, messing around with drugs too much, or whether they've been disrupting the class, calling for attention in the wrong ways, whether they've been fighting too much, whatever the situation, they're asking for help with their behavior. Yeah. So when they come to us, they don't need tough. They need empathy. They I need compassion. That. The first thing I tell them is, and my wife tells me to remind them, that I'm here because I love you. Wow. And it's wow. not going to be the easy love all the time because I, I have standards and I expect you to meet those academic standards. But I want you to know why I'm here and love is part of it. And the reality of, of sharing that with them, it, it, I don't think it immediately sets in for them. But they it don't does. believe you. How can they trust you? No, they, right? you, you have to build a relationship. Right. We have and students coming to us all throughout the year. We don't pick when students come. We mm. don't pick when they mess up. They just come to us when they come to us. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times students will come in and think that they have to put on an act and a show and, and uh, scare everyone off from who they are. Yeah. And uh, that usually breaks down within a couple of days. They figure out, that, they figure out that, oh, oh, these other kids are not going to uh, uh, take me in the bathroom and, and bully me. They're not going to give me problems. They, they, they won't let that happen here. And as a matter of fact, I feel cared for by the adults. And mm -hmm. they oftentimes, mm. after they come in strong, they oftentimes calm down pretty quick. It's funny because I've had parents tell me in conferences, well, we don't want them to go back. We want them to stay with you because wow. they're actually wow. doing their work. And they talk about you guys and the messages you're giving all the time. They want to be And there. all of a sudden, you realize the true importance of your presence in their lives. Something else that helps us become successful with the students is just the nature of our size. We're a small school, and the student-to-teacher ratio is fantastic. It's, it's just 
it's, it's great to have the opportunity to work with students um, without having a, a room full of people. We can yeah. focus on the individual issues in the room. We can focus on the individual issues that are coming from their past. And, uh, is there a cap on the number of students per classroom? No. It just no, depends. There's not, there's not, well, we, we go by class size, but we okay. never get close to that. Um, yeah. Like 12 in a classroom, maybe? Uh, the biggest I've had, probably 18. Okay, wow, and, and that's, that's great. And that's a, that's a pretty big size for, our, for our group. Right. But the, the biggest issue is setting uh, the, 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 the behavior standards immediately. They're always reminding us that we get new flow of folks, so we got to keep going over the rules because a lot of these folks don't deal with regiment well. Right. So mm -hmm. the idea is to get them to slowly but surely buy into why you're actually asking them to do what you're asking them to do. Is there a point that you ask them to leave, not because of bad behavior, and I want to go into that too, but once they kind of get their lives in order, and they, do they, are they the ones that say, I need to go back to public school, or are you the ones that determine that? Uh, we do, and there's a criteria that's set oh, based there? on uh, three, three parts. There's a, a good attendance, um, good grades, and good behavior. And we have identified cutoffs for each of those. Okay, so when they, they can when get they meet out. That, absolutely. <laughs> when they meet that criteria, they go back to their regular school. And what helps us, I was talking about the size of the, mm -hmm. of, the, of the school and the number of students, what helps us in a big way become successful with students is when they come to us, oftentimes they're behind in their credits or they're behind in their grade level. And the smaller size, less students helps us work with them closely. And when we see their, their, their credits building, when we see their grades building, and when they feel that, their esteem builds. Mm. And when their self-esteem mm -hmm. builds, they'll become more successful and ready to go back to their regular school. So this is Seminole County. Correct. Is there anything like this in, in other, do all the counties have that this in Florida that you know of? All, all the counties have some version of okay. what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, but so would, why are you not overfilled with capa to capacity? I mean, why are there not more students coming to you? Well, the schools do a really good job of working with students okay. on their campuses. Okay. Um, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of care and compassion within the school system in all of our schools. Okay. Um, so we don't, we don't but have- But it's sort of a last resort. Right, right before they go to juvie. True. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we're 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 last resort, no doubt, and okay. um, we don't take that responsibility lightly. Right. Mm -hmm. What are the students like? What is the home life like for these students? Where where why are they getting into the kind of trouble that they're getting into? Does it go back to their home life, and and is there a solid foundation there for most of these kids? A lot of our students, and and I can't say this is for all because there's all different kinds of situations that they're coming. You, you find all different kinds of backgrounds and all different kinds of situations. Um, but many of our students have experienced trauma. Uh, many of our students aren't really sure how to cope mm -hmm. with uh, situations and circumstances they've been through or that they're in. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Rick talked about the autonomy that I, that I let the teachers have. Mm -hmm. That's for a purpose. We have to focus on uh, social and emotional learning uh, as much as we focus on yeah. math and English. Right, right. Um, we have to absolutely focus on restorative practices and how to solve problems rather than just punishment. The consequences of being here and the consequences of coping in a negative way once they're with us um, can't be a punishment. That hasn't worked for them. They've got to work mm -hmm. through things and learn. And there's, there is post-traumatic stress on our campus in a big way. And then there are kids who just made bad decisions mm -hmm. and a series of bad decisions. So there's a, there's a, and there's a range of, uh, of financial, you got upper class folk and you got all the way down to lower. Mm -hmm. So there's no, there's no one uh, portrait of a kid who's at our school. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought that at first, but after you talk to them, you realize they you got do. it all, yeah. you got a mix. And so you've got to be able to deal with all those different issues. The one common theme, it's not necessarily the type of home or the situations or the parents. Or the, the one common theme is that they're crying out for help. Yes. And they need something yes. different. And were that something different? Absolutely. And you're doing a great job. And we want to see one of the examples of your great job that you're doing. We are blessed today, viewers, to have a former student from Journeys. He's a senior in high school now. He attended Journeys Academy. And now he's here to tell us the truth. What was it really like being at Journeys and what was this teacher and what was this principal like and, and, and the other students? So you are not going to want to miss this next segment coming up right after the break. Stay with us. Coming up next. Right. But the reality of, of what God's message is, 
is restorative, right. is love, right. is forgiveness. And all those things should, should happen. But also there is structure, there is regiment, there is discipline. Mm -hmm. And those things are necessary to bring a, a child up. You're watching Barbara Beck on Welcome Home, where we share life-changing stories filled with hope. You're watching Welcome Home, bringing you life-changing stories filled with hope. Well, we're talking today about troubled teens. And let me tell you, in talking about Journeys Academy, it sounds like that place is more of a blessing than anything else. And you're going to be hearing from a student who had some time there and um, what his relationship was like with the other students, what got him there, what got him out of there. And um, I just want to introduce you to, we're very, very honored today to have Mason Wheeler here with us today. Hey, Mason. Thank you for having me. Glad that you're here with us today you and your teacher. Mr. Myers, right? Yep. <laughs> you had him yeah. as your teacher. Good, good to have this one here because uh -huh. he's a classic example of what can be done when you really want to change your spirit. Well, you he's know. a success story for sure, yes, right? Mm -hmm. So what got you into Journeys Academy, Mason? Um, fighting. I was, you know, I got altercations with students. Mainly it would happen inside of school, the, the, the altercation, but then actually fighting would happen outside of school. But the reason I was here is because I got caught up in school, I got into argument, which led to fighting, and then I got sent to Journeys. Do you remember um, hearing about Journeys for the first time and the fact that you might be going mm -hmm. there and what some of your thoughts were about going into this alternative school? Yeah, I had I'd known about Journeys years prior. How'd you know about it? Oh, middle school going into high school, there was uh, just rumors always going around, you know, if you, there's you been people up, getting fighting, oh, you're going to Journeys, or you do this, you're going to Journeys. It was, <laughs> It so was, it was jail like school a punishment, and right? jail school, mm -hmm. right? Everyone and so it was jail school. what did you think when you when they said, "Okay, sorry Mason, you're going to Journeys." I had the dean say, "Hey, you are going to be recommended to go to secondary school," is what he said. That's exactly what he said, and I, I was just like, "Hmm." I just kind of sat there and I did not know what he meant. It, I don't know what recommended meant, but it basically meant he was sending me there. They were the school sending me there. So, <clears throat> once I found out I was going to Journeys, it was kind of it was a bummer, but yeah. You really couldn't do anything besides appeal the school board, and that didn't work. So. Oh, you did try to yeah, appeal yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A lot were of people that went to Journeys tried to appeal it. Were your board. parents um, in agreeing that you should go there, or were they trying to fight you going there? Um, my mom, my mom agreed to you know maybe a long suspension, maybe a little bit of Journeys because I went there last spring after spring break, so I was there for the many of the years, like a month and a half, I think, that I was there, and so she's like maybe finish out there, but. Um, so you were only there thought. a month? I was supposed to, or she wanted me to be. I was there until okay. um, December. Till okay. So how many months break. were you actually at Journeys? A um, semester? Yeah, the, a semester, semester and a half. And a half. Yeah, a semester and a half. Semester and a half. Mm -hmm. And you had this guy as your teacher, Mr. Yeah, Elias. For, what for what is he really part. like as a teacher? Tell the truth. Yeah. Go ahead. He's all about love, but you know, he, he gets on everyone's nerves because it's he's tough love. <laughs> he's just like a dad. It's tough love. Yeah. A good dad at least. So okay. um, that's the highest compliment I've been paid today. I get on everyone's nerves. <laughs> no, but you're you're a good guy. You're like a dad to yeah, him. Yeah, no, so, well, I mean, that's so nice. Like I tell them, I say, you know, there there are rules that you're gonna have to follow when mm -hmm. you get out of here to stay at your old school, to go in the military, the things you guys wanna do all require regiment, all require some some kind of discipline. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's start now. Yeah. You know. Well, why are you okay now, Mason, to go back into public school? Because you're a, a senior in public school now. Mm -hmm. Did you learn coping skills? Did you learn how not to fight anymore at Journeys? Yeah, it was, I learned coping skills probably before I went to Journeys, even before I fought, but it was almost like I ignored them. 
you know, it was more about um, being the harder individual, being um, more than the others. You know, someone starts arguing with you. The only way that I, I couldn't argue better, I couldn't defuse the situation because I was also people that were also making the situation worse. So I would end up fighting. And um, when I went to Journeys, it was like very much a community. Okay. So there was, you, everyone was held accountable. So if I was to even get in an argument with someone, it, you felt bad because, you know, everyone's accountable for everything they do. And Did it you was, ever fight at Journeys? I didn't even have so much as an argument, really. Have you had going back to public school? Are you mm -hmm. arguing? Do mm -hmm. you have a anger problems now? I or? have when I was younger. Yeah. yeah. When I was younger, you know, it would just be outbursts. It would be just, it would just rise up and, and I go, um, I go crazy. I get mad. Um, but mainly it was just, it was just anger. I'd get really, just really heated and you would just sit there and just get furious at anything okay. that happens, you know. I wouldn't do anything physical until I started arguing with people, started getting into, into altercations and then fighting them. That was the first thing was physical was fighting people like mm -hmm. my age and so. So how do you cope now? What keeps you, what diffuses your anger now it's, rather than having a physical fight? It's so random. It's like, <laughs> um, it's just kind of joking it off, but not oh, intentionally. I don't okay. do anything intentionally to, you know, you don't, don't get mad, don't fight. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. just kind of, nothing's that serious to So you're using in humor and levity mm -hmm. maybe as one of the tools for yeah. dealing with, with and anger? And there's just no reason to get that upset unless there's a genuine, you know, self-defense reason to ever put your hands on anyone. So, so he sounds like Mr. Lias, Mr. Teacher Lias, <laughs> like he's one of the lesser problems maybe that you had at Journeys. A absolutely. He, he was a kid who, honestly, I immediately was drawn to because of his, his levity and kind of... His demeanor. His demeanor. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I knew that that kind of demeanor in a classroom or in any kind of organization makes everything easier to deal with. So immediately he became a, a leader, and he was a go-to guy to get the 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 situation diffused, you know, because I know he followed my lead on on being a little bit more relaxed and and yeah. kind of yeah. making folks at ease, mm -hmm. right. and that was that. I think in the end he realized this, that that ability that that gift of of gab he has. Yeah. Sometimes I ask him to stop. <laughs> but usually it was so it was a soothing balm. It was it was what we needed for the moment. Yeah. And uh, when I heard he was coming on the show, I was like, oh that's perfect. I got a chance guy. to see him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus I think it's a it's a good example to everyone that you can change if you honestly want to. Mm -hmm. just by, by, by using skills you already have. Mm -hmm. And we talk about self-regulation a lot. Uh, Mr. Bevan has us all using restorative practices in class where we, you, if, you, if you are put out of my class, the first thing you gotta do when you come back is tell me why you got, why, why did you have to leave? Mm -hmm. And why are you apologizing? Because I asked for an apology mm -hmm. too. And that kind of makes folks, you know, have a moment. Mm -hmm. Where they, all right, well, yeah, I did do that. Yeah. And I, I did cause a disruption. And that is why I'm here in the first place. So they're owning it. Mm -hmm. Once right? they own it, I know that they're okay to come back because they dealt with it. Yeah. They had that little cathartic moment. Mm -hmm. You know, Journeys is a public school, so it's obviously not a Christian school. But a lot of what you're telling me, Rick, is it sounds very biblical in a lot of the ways you handle kids. Mm -hmm. um, the restorative thing, what did you call it? Restorative? Restorative practices. Practices. Mm -hmm. is like what the Bible teaches and with redemption. Mm -hmm. You know, God will restore and he will redeem a life like he did mm -hmm. with you, Mason. So, so I see that. Uh, is it ever a struggle for you not to really be able to express your Christian faith because you're in a public setting, but still be able to, to live like a Christian? Not, not really, mm -hmm. because a lot of the kids are, are of Christian faith. They are? A mm -hmm. lot of kids are, and they, they, they're willing to share that. Of course, as I tell them, if you don't believe in God, believe in karma, because I can't force them to believe whatever, we're in America. Right. But the reality of, of what God's message is, is restorative, right. is love, right. is forgiveness. And all those things should, should happen. But also there is structure, there is regiment, there is discipline. Mm -hmm. And those things are necessary to bring a, a child up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, my, my church, uh, is right across from Crimson Academy where my kid goes to school. Mm -hmm. And uh, Calvary Temple of Praise, uh, shout out to 
We yeah. have a right, Absolutely. all right. <laughs> and your child, uh, tell me about your child. My kid is a, uh, he was, he's a second semester junior at Crooms. He's not gonna be Academy. going to Journeys, right? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, thank God he's, he's, he's doing well. Good. And uh, the big issue for me is that he, he grows up to, to be like this guy. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. I, he, he made Absolutely. a mistake to get to Journeys. Right. He's still a great kid. But we all make mistakes, yeah. mm -hmm. He's right? a great kid, a kid that I, I, I think a lot of. Yeah. And I think of all of them as my children. Mm. When they come through my classroom, you know, I'm sure sometimes they don't want to be my child. <laughs> 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 but I tell them, I said, it's going to be a tough life. I want to make sure that you are equipped to deal with those moments that are not going to be the easiest moments to get through. Mm -hmm. So when you come through this classroom, I want you guys to be as 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 forward thinking as you can and get as much information as you can and just show me this mm -hmm. so i don't if, as long as we're not here yeah and if you're showing mm -hmm. me this Go i'm up. thrilled i don't mm -hmm. i don't know where because we get people at all times of the year and at all levels mm -hmm. so this one comes in and he takes forever to write a narrative essay and i'm on him every day about it yeah. and then i get it and it's one of the best essays I've read as a teacher in 14 years. Wow. Are you going to be doing something with that writing skill that God's um, given you? We'll see. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, Did you know you could write? Uh, kind of. My mom's a really good creative writer. Okay. She does a lot of that stuff. And my sister is an artist, full-time artist. So, you know, the creativity I knew was there for a narrative mm -hmm. essay. You know, mm -hmm. That's what you need for is creativity. But you're talking about um, expressing your uh, Christianity in the public school system. And obviously you can't openly, you know, try and, and express it, but they give us times, especially in the morning, of morning assemblies. We have morning assemblies, we have teachers that do meditations, oh, good. and what that is is just good. quiet time to kind of do your own thing, and for me, it'll be praying, okay. or taking quiet time for myself to help right. regulate, and mm -hmm. uh, that is where they really kind of let people do their own thing, which could be praying in, in Christianity, any religion that the person is. Right. Um, or taking quiet time to themselves and actually meditating and, and re regulating themselves. And it's it's this growth of, of self-regulation mm -hmm. where you pause and uh, Dr. B, our assistant principal, always says, I'm going to do what I have to do mm -hmm. so I can do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I pray, he prays, mm -hmm. I'm sure a few other people pray. Mm -hmm. And I'm praying for, for serenity, I'm praying to be a positive force in somebody's life, I'm praying to be calm in the, in the middle of the storm. We always say we're soaring above the storm clouds. Mm -hmm. that's and that's, that's truly what we're doing wow. because you could be, it, you could easily take the negative road and get there and decide that you're going to downwardly spiral. But it's hard to do that at our school mm -hmm. because we're, we're constantly reminding them mm -hmm. that there's, all you got to do is embrace the upward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you do, you can soar above those clouds. And that's why your mascot is eagles, mm -hmm. yep. right? Yep. To soar, <laughs> soar like eagles. Storm. And yeah. you are doing that, Mason Wheeler. And I'm just so proud of you for making that transition and for really acknowledging the Lord in your life for one mm -hmm. thing, but also uh, getting your act together. God has yeah. great things in store for you. I know that young I'm proud man. Of you too, buddy. Very proud <laughs> Very of you. Very proud of you. And thank you to you as well, Rick Lyson, for yes. um, Lias, for being here with us today. And My pleasure. Great influence that you have mm -hmm. with those students and with me today as well, and I'm sure to encourage our viewers. I do want to say one more thing about Principal Kevin Bev Kenny Bevan. I want to call him Kevin Bevan, <laughs> oh, but he's Kenny That's Bevan, an right? My mom Kevin does Bevan. Everybody does that, right? So Kenny Bevan mm -hmm. is the principal there, and you guys would not be able to be doing what you're doing without his leadership, so we're so grateful for that. He has two sons. Uh, I want us to be able to acknowledge his family and uh, just the wonderful man that he is as well, right? Yes, Very much and, so. and he brings his kids on campus when we have events, yeah. and they're mm -hmm. wonderful guys that's they're constantly great. having a ball that's great. and he's a good dad I would I would want him to be my dad yeah. well <laughs> sounds like you're a father figure to a lot of the, the yeah. guys and girls yeah. there Thank at you. Journeys Academy you if you much. want more information viewers about this incredible school Journeys Academy here in Central Florida you can go to the website that's on your screen for you right now again I am so grateful to God for bringing these gentlemen across our path today and for all the great work they're doing there at Journeys stay with us we've got more coming up Hi, I'm John Erickson Tata. And isn't it interesting how praise comes in different forms? I mean, often you can feel praise bubbling up within you like, a, like an effervescent 7-Up. 
times when praise just comes natural, overflowing your heart, like praise for answered prayer or for a friend's salvation. But other days, praise is a sacrifice. It is hard and costly and with little emotion, like when you um, get the report of a cancerous lump or praising him through chronic pain or a son's angry rebellion. Praising God in such times is like trying to, trying to unscrew a stubborn cap on your stiff heart. You don't want to do it, but you know you should do it. But Psalm 50 says that God is honored when we offer sacrifices of praise like that. Sure, God is delighted when our praise bubbles up out of sheer joy when it's easy, but he is especially delighted and definitely more glorified when we offer words of adoration wrenched from a heart that is pained and bruised and hurting. So let go of any resentment today, any doubts, and your logic that insists that praising God now does not make sense. No, rather lift your head, lift your heart and your soul up above your problems. Such a sacrifice of praise makes even angels fold their wings and listen. I hope you enjoyed our program today. I think it's so important to take a good look at our parenting and try to evaluate what's working and perhaps what's not working so well. The Bible tells us to know the condition of our flocks. We have to know our children's temperaments, their hot buttons, their likes, their dislikes. We have to understand what makes them tick. I know with my own two daughters, my parenting style was not exactly the same for each child. One was super sensitive and would have her heart broken with too stern of a correction. Just a serious look might make her melt into tears. Well, the other one was kind of dramatic and emotional in other ways and perhaps needed a different approach. I can remember lots of words of explanation with that one. <laughs> I do have to say that in spite of the challenges that accompany those teenage years, I love those days. I found great enjoyment in getting to know my daughter's friends. I always wanted to have kids at my house and my goal was to make my home safe, but really fun. We had a ping pong table, indoor basketball game, even air hockey. I wanted my daughters to be at our home with their friends for obvious reasons. And then the other thing that is so important, I know not every home has a godly father, but ours did. And I give lots of credit to my husband for helping raise daughters who love the Lord. But no matter where you are in your journey raising your family, I find great comfort from Proverbs 22, 6, which says, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he'll not depart from it. That word old could mean a lot of things, but the main thing is to remember our God is faithful. Our children will be okay. Just love them and pray them right into the kingdom. And that, dear friends, is our note of hope for today. Thanks so much for joining us and God bless you. You just watched Welcome Home with Barbara Beck, a Good Life 45 original production. That makes you a part of our hope team here on Good Life 45, where hope happens.